I'm joined by a member of the Knesset for the United Torah Judaism Party, Mr. Moshe Roth. Good morning to you. You're also a member of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and Health Committees, I'd like to point out as well. We've just heard the IDF giving a, a, an update with regards to the situation on both the northern and the southern fronts, evidently very invested in the fact that this is now a full-on wartime scenario. The security cabinet also set to meet this evening at 8 p.m. local time. How will the government now be moving over to handling the war? Good morning to you, to all your listeners. Uh, we do hope for the best. I hope this to be a good day, a good morning. It is uh, very trying times for us. Um, to your question, um, actually, uh, all the preparations for this operation has taken into account the possibility of having an autumn front uh, with, that will be active. We do hope that uh, the Hezbollah will restrain themselves because they are going for a situation where they will total, totally be anal, analyzed, uh, annihilated. Uh, there's no other possibility for us. Um, in, the, up in, the, in the north, many villages have been evacuated already. We are prepared, fully prepared. The army is prepared. The, the home front is prepared. But we do hope we don't have to, to get to that. But if we do, God forbid, have an, another front, we will be able to handle it. Are you satisfied with the forming of what has come out as the emergency unity government? So, uh, I'd like to remind the viewers that a lot of the criticism over the past couple of months, even prior to the war with Hamas, was on the coalition, but more specifically, the more far-right members of the coalition um, in terms of those parties. United Torah Judaism, as well as the Shas party, has long been part of the government. What stance does your party take with regards to the formation of a, a unity party, a national unity emergency? emergency government, and also with regards to how you plan on moving forward with the war effort? To your first question, let me tell you something, a very important thing to all listeners. The most important thing that we have, the, most, the, the best ammunition we have is our unity. We are at the moment unified. This is the most important thing. There's nothing more important than that. So to be unified means to be unified uh, in, in, in the government, to be unified out in the street, and to be unified in the Knesset. I'm sitting together with, with other Knesset members who are on the far left, and we work together totally, brother, sister, together. There's no difference whatsoever. You would never know the difference. You would walk into the Knesset today. You would never know who is part of the coalition, who is part of the position, who is on the right, who is on the left. And the same is in the streets. There are tens of thousands of volunteers from the religious community or working together with the non-religious community together on the on the front and on, the, on, on all, all parts men women and children are together today with one goal in mind and that is to bring peace back to our country so there's nothing else on the agenda that is to, to your first question and going forward the same going forward we are full with the the army full with the government and whatever has to be done should be done and if i may just ask you one final question yuli edelstein a member of the knesset for the likud party has said that as part of the protocols there will be a thorough investigation as to who exactly was at fault for what is being deemed a major but major screw up with regards to both the intelligence and the government failures i understand that there will be a time for reckoning but where do you stand or what exactly do you have to respond to the fact that at some point blame will be placed and likely fall on many of your coalition partners? There is, no, there is nothing that should be kept back from the public or from any kind of inquiries about who is to blame. That is, that is very important. What's more important is that nothing should be focused now when everything that has to do with blame should wait till the end of this uh, operation until we bring back the peace to the land. And only then should we sit down and find not only who is to blame, but what's, what social part was to blame and which, which uh, part of, of government or judicial has to be changed. But all of that should wait after the operation. Member of Knesset for the United Torah Judaism Party, Mr. Moshe Roth, I want to thank you so very much for taking the time to join me here on the I-24 News Desk this morning.
And still with me here in studio is Gonen Ben Yitzchak, a former Shinbet agent. Now, Gonen, another part of your job that has famously come to light, obviously being the Green Prince, Mossab Hassan Yosef's handler, the son of Hamas. Before getting to the question, I would like to play you a clip that, if I'm not mistaken, I think went viral about six years ago. Let's take a look. Shukran Sayyid Rais. I take the floor on behalf of the UN Watch. My name is Musab Hassan Youssef. I grew up in Ramallah as a member of Hamas. I address the words to the Palestinian Authority, which claims to be the sole legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. I ask, where does your leg legitimacy come from? The Palestinian people did not elect you, and they did not appoint you to represent them. You are self-appointed. Your accountability is not to your own people. This is evidenced by your own total violation for their human rights. In fact, the Palestinian individual and their human development is the least of your concerns. You kidnap Palestinian students from campus and torture them in your jails. You torture your political rivals. The suffering of the Palestinian people is the outcome of your selfish political interest. You are the greatest enemy of the Palestinian people. If Israel did not exist, you would have no one to, to blame. Take responsibility for the outcome of your own actions. You fan the flames of conflict to maintain your abusive power. Finally, you use this platform to mislead the international community, to mislead the Palestinian society, to believe that Israel is responsible for the problems you create. Thank you. Now, interesting that that clip was addressed to the Palestinian Authority, but we are talking about the son of one of the senior members in the Hamas organization. How is it that after listening to a clip like that, we still have a biased media presence toward Israel and we still have, um, yes, there is a legitimate pro-Palestinian solidarity and cause, but surely their plot gets overshadowed when they can't distinguish between the Palestinian people and Hamas. Somehow, uh, people don't understand uh, the difference between the fact that uh, for the last 50, 50 years there is an occupation, okay? We occupy uh, millions of Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, and the fact that in Gaza, uh, Hamas is a terrorist, Gaza and the West Bank, but I'm talking now about Gaza because Gaza is uh, our uh, biggest concern. Hamas is a terrorist organization. Uh, they are more uh, into murder and, and killing people than uh, to uh, really save their own people. I think that after the attack uh, last uh, Saturday, uh, Hamas and the Islamic Jihad are not part of the human race. I think that uh, like the Nazis, Israel should uh, aim to destroy them, to assassinate all the members of uh, Hamas. But we need to remember that on the other hand, we have Palestinians that are not part of Hamas, they are not part of uh, the killing, uh, and we need to find a solution uh, to this uh, problem. And the fact that Israel, uh, for the last uh, many years, didn't try to find a solution, and it's hard, and I must say, also the PA is not perfect. Okay, the PA is not perfect. Abu Mazen is not a perfect uh, match for uh, for Israel or for for Netanyahu. But we have a problem that we need to solve. And all the time, like I'll say, like in a Polish uh, family, we try, you know, to suppress uh, the problems, to hide them, and, and say as as long as we don't see the problem, there is no problem. No, there is a problem. And the people that want to attack Israel, some many of them are anti-Semitics, and and they, you know, they hate Israel, they hate Jews. They use the, the problem, the Palestinian problem, in order to attack Israel. Um, but again, I think the, the biggest problem is not the fact that uh, some people uh, criticize Israel in the world. The, our biggest problem is to find a solution uh, to our region, because in the end, many Palestinians and all Israelis want to live in peace. Uh, they want future to their children. They don't want to wake up into a nightmare like, like the one uh, we woke up uh, last week. Um, and uh, two words that are very important here are leadership 
and uh, people that need to take responsibility. And we see right now no responsibility and no leadership, unfortunately. So what is the solution then for the Gaza Strip? We're talking about, okay, we go in, we eradicate Hamas, and it's now the day after. Is imposing then the rule of the Palestinian Authority in the Gaza Strip good enough? Is that an actual viable solution? I think that uh, one one part is uh, to attack Hamas, but the, the other part is to bring the PA, to bring the PA back into uh, Gaza. So many people say, uh, do you think that, uh, Ham uh, that the PA will be uh, uh, ready or will agree to uh, to step back into uh, Gaza and uh, rule Gaza uh, using the force of, of uh, IDF? I say. Yes, if if we give them a future, if we go not only to for them or ask them to take over uh, Gaza, but also we find a solution to what's going on also in the West Bank, we can we can work together with the PA to take over Gaza. This is what we need to do. Solutions that hopefully will have some final answers in the next coming days and weeks. Gonin Ben Yitzchak, former Shinbet agent, thank you so much for being with us here on the program. We'll see you again at the top of the hour for more updates on day 10 of the war.